Hey you guys, uh, Sandra Cohn here. Hey, so um, first of all, I'm working from home today, which is why I'm making this video in my living room and not up at my studio. So welcome to my home. Um, but listen, I had a question come in about film density. Um, the question was, listen, I hear people talking about film density and that's why you know, film photographers tend to err on the side of overexposure is, is, uh, so that they get a good dense, dense negative. But what does that even mean? So, um, so in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about film density and go into a little detail so that you really understand what that means and what photographers are even talking about when they're talking about film density and their negatives. All right. So, all right. Yeah, let's dive in. Okay, you guys, here we go. Film density. Let's get into it. So this is a 10-stop exposure test that I took on a roll of Fuji 400H. And um, I love sharing this example for because I can teach so many things from, from just, this, just this test shot. So first of all, 10-stop exposure test. That's huge. And originally when I started, I was... Um, wanting to use this test, I was using it to illustrate how um, you can overexpose film, here we are at five stops overexposure, without losing detail in the highlights or um, blowing your highlights or um, losing information, which is a big deal and which is one of the reasons why film photographers love using film because of this huge exposure latitude that it has, especially color film. You, we just, you, we don't see that um, with digital photography. I have another test that I did here. This is a roll of Portrait 400 um, shot. This is a seven stop exposure test and then a seven stop exposure test that I did with my digital camera above. And as you can see at two stops over, we're starting to lose detail in the highlights in the digital image um, and by three stops over we've lost a lot so you can imagine if we were at five stops over uh, his face would basically be gone and here at five stops over we're fine so um, that's that's one thing that I love to show with this test but when I, I started having this conversation um, in the class that I used this for, the, the question then came up with like, well, then you can just overexpose your film all day and not have to worry about it. Um, and that's not actually true. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about that. So then that brings us to film density. I had a question come in today um, with someone asking about understanding what even that term means when they hear film photographers talk about film density. Why does it matter? What do we looking to do. So that's that's where I want to go with this today. So the term film density actually refers to the negative and how dense the negative is. And um, in film terms, you can have a dense negative, which looks like this, which is a darker negative uh, because it's actually thicker. Or you can have a thin negative, which looks like this because it's actually thinner. Um, a thin negative is underexposed, it's had less light, and a dense negative is overexposed, it's had more light. And what happens with film is when you add more light to, to it, when you give it a little extra light, when you overexpose a little, you actually get, to an extent, you get more information imprinted on that negative, which is why the negative becomes dense. So let's have a closer look. So here, this is a box speed exposure, means, meaning that I shot it at this box speed of the film, so 400 at, in this case, because this is Fuji 400H. And here we see it at two stops over and two stops under. And you can see that at two stops over, the negative is a little darker than it is here. It's a little denser. That's what that means. But we still have information in the highlights. None of this is blown. We can still see all of that. And we also have a lot of great information in the shadows. So if you got up really close, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the, you know, the individual hairs on the doll, for example. If this were a real life person, you'd be able to see skin texture and things like that. So this is what we talk about when we have a good 
dense negative, whereas this is a thin negative, and you can see that, yeah, there's information in the highlights, but in the shadows, there's just not enough light to capture any kind of information. So we're, we're not seeing individual hair. Um, if this were a real life person, we wouldn't be seeing skin tone. This is going to print grainy and muddy and just yucky. So that's what we talk about with film density. And creating that kind of a really good dense negative is why film photographers tend to err on the side of overexposure because we want to make sure that we have enough information in our shadows so that the darkest part of our image has plenty of light so it's not going to look muddy or underexposed and when we know that the darkest part of our image is properly exposed we know that we're also going to have detail in the highlights because it's actually really really hard to blow your highlights with um, on a film negative, which is awesome. Now, what I want to point out is, yes, it's important to have a good dense negative. You don't ever want a thin negative because those pictures are, aren't going to look good. But you can overexpose too much. There's such thing as having a negative that is too dense. Um, and that has its own problems. So here, for example, we're at, when we're at like over four, over five, you can see how dark this negative is getting. And if you look at the print or the, the printed image, it still looks fine. What we're starting to notice, you know, is there's a color shift happening. We're not blowing any highlights, but to get a print that's looking this good off of a negative that is this dark, requires a lot of work on the part of the lab. So the scan technician is going to have to spend a lot more time on these. They're harder to scan. They're going to be harder to print. And honestly, this level of overexposure just really isn't necessary. What you want to do with your exposure is you want to be making sure that your film density is falling between here and maybe here. You know, two stops is exceptional. I mean, not exceptional, acceptable. <laughs> so that you do have information in the shadows, in the darkest part, and your highlights look fine. But once you start getting over into crazy amounts of overexposure, again, that's going to be hard for the, the technician to scan. It's also going to introduce unwanted color shifts. Fuji will start to go magenta, and uh, Portra will start to go yellow, for example. Um, and it also will introduce unwanted grain. And so this is this getting up into this situation at plus five or more is really just as much as a problem of a problem as being down here at under. So what I do to make sure that I'm getting a really good exposure and I have enough density in my negative so that I have and my lab has a good negative to work with for scanning and for printing, I always rate my film at box speed and then I meter for the shadows so I put my meter in here in the dark part of the shadow so I know that that dark part is going to get plenty of light and then I know that my highlights are going to be fine and metering that way usually puts my negatives about here in this range which is just fine so I hope that that explained density for you a little bit and why we as film photographers err on the side of overexposure um, and what all that means. Again, you don't need to be over here and you don't ever want to be over here. So just meter at box speed or rated at box speed, meter for your shadows. And I have a video that I can link below this um, so you can see what I'm talking about as far as how to meter for your shadows and then you're gonna get a perfectly dense negative every time. All right, so I hope that helps.